the Mercedes W14 pales in comparison to vehicles emerging from the Brackley production line. During the turbo hybrid era, the cars designed by Mike Elliott's engineering team, adhering to ground-affected technical regulations, proved to be monumental failures. Consequently, the team sought to revamp their approach. Bringing back James Allison to lead, his focus shifted extensively towards the 2024 car, closely studying the W14's shortcomings. Recently, Allison disclosed the primary issue afflicting the W14, which, unfortunately, remains unsolvable this year. Interested in learning the core problem within the W14, James Allison identifies it as the crux behind the W14's lackluster performance. To delve into the details, it's clear that Mercedes recognized the flawed concept behind the W14 from the very beginning, evident during pre-season testing. The Mercedes vehicles not only lagged far behind Red Bull, but they also trailed Ferrari and Aston Martin. Moreover, the W14 was slower than even its customer counterpart. The W14 encountered specific issues, unlike the W13, especially noticeable during Bahrain. Notably, it exhibited tire wear, particularly in the rear, over the course of a race. This exposed the car's dearth of rear downforce. Hamilton and Russell further highlighted that the W14 stood in stark contrast to the W13. The 2023 Mercedes car boasted a formidable front end, which, unfortunately, destabilized the rear of the vehicle, causing unpredictability. In response, Toto Wolff, the Mercedes team principal, urged his team to implement radical mid-season adjustments at Bahrain. These changes aim to enhance performance, consistency, and stability. This period also marked a shift in technical leadership, with James Allison reassuming his role. The turning point arrived at Monaco, where the Silver Arrows introduced a nearly spec car featuring revised side pods. Certain aspects remained unchanged due to complications, like the side impact structures. Nevertheless, Mercedes committed to a fresh direction. While Allison delved into studying and learning, the team made significant performance strides. However, foundational issues persisted, rendering the W14 challenging to maneuver on specific tracks. The lack of optimal rear downforce appeared to be at the root of the problems, and the team diligently worked to rectify the situation. A prime example of these efforts was the Belgian upgrade package, which introduced more aggressive side pods to enhance airflow to the Coke bottle area and the diffuser, thus augmenting rear load generation. However, these upgrade endeavors represented modest steps, given the team's limitations in altering the W14. Within the season, James Allison, the former and current technical director of Mercedes, acknowledged the car's unpredictability and tendency to react in opposing ways within seconds. He identified this as a fundamental issue, impairing drivers' confidence. Ensuring optimal downforce remained a priority, aiming to create a more reassuring driving experience. Reflecting on Allison's observations, consider watching Lewis Hamilton or George Russell's qualifying laps, observing the corrections made during corner entry and exit, often mid-corner. This underscores the challenge faced by Mercedes drivers as the W14 exhibited tendencies of understeer or oversteer, necessitating corrections that compromised lap times and eroded driver confidence. This starkly contrasts with the stability of the Red Bull car, evident from its onboard shots. Recall the prowess of the W11 in 2020, expertly handled by Lewis Hamilton, representing how a car should feel. This parallels the current Red Bull car's stability, attributed to its robust downforce generation. James Allison cites downforce as paramount in Formula One car design. Understanding the primary issue, let's delve into the reasons. Despite Mercedes' efforts with upgrades, the fundamental problem cannot be effectively addressed, as attempted in the previous season. Multiple factors converge into a single crucial cause. The most recurring concern voiced by drivers and Allison is the scarcity of downforce, especially at the rear, within the current ground effect technical regulations. Roughly 60% of the downforce originates from the underfloor, influenced by two main factors, the car's ride height and suspension system. Ride height emerged as a persistent challenge for Mercedes since the preceding year. 
Transitioning from a low-rate design of the W13 to a slightly higher W14 led to downforce loss. Despite this, altering the ride height proves complex due to the suspension system. Mercedes continued with the conventional pull-rod front and push-rod rear suspension, carried over from their early turbo-hybrid setups designed for low rake. Regrettably, this stiffness wasn't calibrated for the lower ride heights they adopted. The issue compounded as Mercedes maintained this setup in the W14, despite raising the ride height. Changing the rear suspension mid-season, however, is a substantial challenge. The gearbox casing and design are regulated by technical specifications, limiting alterations. The restrictions extend to the aerodynamic front, as ride height adjustments significantly impact aerodynamics, given the intricacies of modern F1 vehicles dependent on vortex utilization. This leaves Mercedes without the option to make such alterations mid-season, though they are contemplating these changes for the W15. Mike Elliott affirmed that the optimal ride height has been identified, indicating that most aerodynamic hurdles have been overcome. He acknowledged the challenge of developing a car while navigating testing restrictions and the necessity of committing to a chosen direction. Ultimately, the W14's performance hinges on the intricacies of its suspension system, specifically its stiffness and interaction with ride height. The constraints posed by technical regulations make mid-season fixes impossible, but the team aims to address these challenges in the forthcoming W15 design. The divergence between Mercedes and Red Bull can be attributed to their respective suspension strategies, particularly Red Bull's adept management of ride height and downforce. As Mercedes moves forward, incorporating the lessons learned, the focus remains on striking the balance between stability and downforce generation. I believe we've positioned ourselves well for the upcoming winter. Now, I'm curious about your insights regarding the suspension system, which seems to be the key factor where Mercedes is experiencing the most performance deficit. I'm eager to hear your thoughts and perspectives, please share them in the comments section below. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel for notifications on our future uploads, ensuring you stay informed about the developments in the 2023 Formula 1 season.